In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a basic Google form really interactive by using sections, branching, and response validation. These three elements can elevate a Google form from a simple survey into a really engaging learning experience. So let's dive in. I'm going to assume that you already know how to create a basic Google form and add on some customizations like a theme or images like you see in this form. The first thing that we are going to do is use response validation to create a password or lock element inside of our form. Response validation only works with open-ended questions and you'll typically use it with short answer questions. I have a new short answer question here and we'll use it to ask a response validated question about this image. So I have the question here, what hyphenated word describes this design? Now I want to make sure that they put in the right answer, which is tie-dye, before going on to the next question, so I need to turn on response validation. I do this by clicking on the little three-dot snowman icon in the lower right-hand corner, selecting response validation, and then I can choose what type of response needs to be added for this question. As you can see, the default is number, and if the answer to your question or puzzle is a number, you would obviously choose this and probably select equal to for your option. Now, because I want a word, I'm going to switch to text and keep it as the default, which is contained. Notice it's got a few other options here as well. And one thing I do want to note is you only get one option, so participants will have to type the word or the phrase here exactly as you have it in order to proceed. Now it does say contain, so if they typed a little more it would still accept it in this case, but they definitely have to have the word or the phrase that you type. So if I was doing a question like this where it would be kind of easy to get this answer wrong, let me type tie-dye. I would probably give some additional help or description in the question just to make sure they spell and format it correctly, but of course that is up to you. The next thing I need to do is click right here and add some custom error text. It's important to add this um, because this is what's going to pop up if they don't answer correctly. So for now I'm just going to say oops, but obviously you could customize this to whatever you want. Finally, I'm going to add a new section to the form following this question. To do this, I click on the bottom icon here on the side, which is Add Section. Now I need to give my new section a title and a description, so this is a great place to add like a congratulations message or some sort of follow-up to the question you just asked. If you want something a little bit more engaging, you could also add an image, a video, or even a GIF file, either as a standalone image or inside of the next question as I see here. You can't do a whole lot with formatting the text inside of a Google form. You can't really add bold or bullet points or anything like that. So if that's something you want to add, you can always create the text in an image in something like Canva or PowerPoint and upload kind of your text in an image file if you really want to do some fancier customizations. But for now, we will leave it pretty simple. Okay, now that we have another section added, you're going to start to see how you might be able to set up branching inside one of these forms. For example, you'll notice here it says after section one, I have the option to continue to the next section or go to a different section or submit the form. For our purposes here for this response validated question, we definitely just want to keep it as continue to the next section. But now let's see how we can do a similar branching technique with a multiple choice question as well. So if I scroll up a little bit in my form, I have this lovely multiple choice question. So I'm going to go ahead and click into it. And similarly to where I found response validation, I have an option that says go to section based on answer. I'm going to click that. Now you have to, I believe, have at least two sections set up, like have a second section set up in order for this option to show. So do make sure that you have at least one section created before you turn that on. Now for each one of these options, depending on which option they select, they can choose to go to any sections I have already created or submit the form. So just for the sake of argument, let's add in just a couple of extra sections. We'll just call this section three and we'll add one more and we'll call it section four. If I know I'm going to do a branching form, even if I don't have it all entirely built out at the beginning, I might just create my section headings because that makes this step a lot easier because now I can see, okay, go to section one, go to section two, maybe go to section three or section four based on color. There's a lot of possibilities here for what you can do with a branching form, but it can really make your Google form engaging. Just like with the response validation, I would also add a section break after that any branching questions that you do, it's just going to keep things sort of clean and organized in your form. 
But now we've added a few different things. We've added some branching sections and we've also added a response validation. So let's go ahead and try to preview this form to see what this kind of mishmash all looks like together. So the first thing we have was this is a demo form, fill it out. I remember that I had us go to a different section based on that. So I'm going to click here and then it goes to section three. Well, now that doesn't give me much to do in this particular example. So let's click back. And I'm just going to click one of the ones that we didn't change and hit next. Now we're on our second question. So it says, here's the image and it says, what hyphenated word describes this design? So what happens if I get it wrong? I'll type a wrong answer and it says, oops. And then of course I could customize this message to say, try again, something like that. Let me go ahead and change it to what I know is the right answer and say next. And now it's taking me further and further in the form. And of course these were just some empty questions and I'll go ahead and click submit. Hopefully this gives you an idea of some fun and creative things you can do inside of a Google form to make it really interactive. We talked about adding response validation. We also talked about adding in branching where you can go from one question and kick you to different parts of the form based on that question. I've used these combination of techniques to create everything from escape room puzzles to actual learning tutorials because you can insert videos into here. You could have kind of a branching lesson really just inside of a Google form. And the great thing is it's going to track all of the data and all of the things that your participants do inside your Google form tracking. So hopefully this gives you some ideas. If you have any questions, please let me know.